We've been using the cosine rule for finding lengths. We're now going to move forward and we're going to use it for finding angles. angles. Very good. So if you haven't copied this new blue diagram down, please do so. Just like the sine rule can be used for lengths and it can be used for angles, right? I can use the cosine rule for both sides of the equation, okay? How am I going to do it? I'm going to just write down my cosine rule again because you can see this equation, it's geared to find a side, right? I have the side here as the subject, and that's why it was so easy to find x, right? Um, every formula is geared to find something. Okay? For instance, um, you guys recognize this. What's this a formula for? This is the area of a circle, right? So this is geared to find the area if you know the radius. Okay? But I could really easily just flip this around the other way. Suppose I knew what the area of my circle is, but I want to find the radius. What would I do to this guy? I would make R the subject. Um, I suppose I would put the pi over here. I've got to do one more thing. What would I do from there? I would take the square root, right? So I'm going to go put the R over here, square root. Now, usually when I take the square root of both sides, I usually have to worry about plus minus. I don't in this particular case. Can anyone tell me why? Just a little side note. Yeah. Very good. For the same reason that this here, I don't have to worry about a plus or minus, it's because this length has to be positive. Can't possibly be negative. So that's why, oops, that's why I just have a plus and not plus minus here. Same deal here. Right? So this changing the subject business, right? Now, if I know what the area of a circle is, like if I've measured out you know, the number of squares on a, on a knitting pattern or something like that, I divide by pi, take square root, that'll give me the radius. That's what changing the subject does. So let's play this game with the cosine rule. Um, this is how we've been writing the cosine rule. It's geared to find a side, right? So you can see that there's an angle hiding in there, right? The angle is over there right in the very end of the equation, capital C. That's the angle I want, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange everything, just like I rearranged it here, so that the angle is, it'll be, you know, the cos C will be over on the left-hand side and everything else will be on the right. So let's start rearranging. For starters, what I'll do is I'm going to put this C squared and this minus 2 ab cos c, I'm going to swap them around. I'm going to swap them around. Okay. So I'm going to get 2ab cos c, and I'm going to get a squared plus b squared minus c squared on the right. So I've literally just swapped them. I've added 2ab cos c to both sides, and I've taken away c squared from both sides. Okay. So far, so good. There's only one more step I need to do now to get the angle by itself, right? I just need to get rid of this pesky 2ab, which is hanging there on the left. So I'll divide everything through. Divide both sides by 2ab. Right? So that's going to leave me with this on the right-hand side. Okay. So let's just pause for a second. What we've just written down is still the cosine rule. I started from the same spot. This is the cosine rule. And this last line is also the cosine rule. And you can use both. It depends on what you want to find. Here, I wanted to find a side. So it made sense to use that first one. But now, I want to find an angle. So it makes sense to use this second one. Okay. So let's give it a go on this particular question. Right? I've got my formula written down. I've got my diagram. And now I just want to interpret it properly so I know what to fit where. Okay. What's the name of the unknown angle I want to find? Theta. It's just theta. So I'm going to go directly from here, I'm going to write cos theta. Now be careful, over here on the right hand side, I've got an A, a B, and a C, right? Now A and B, you can swap them around if you like, and it's, it's all the same, right? Like A squared plus B squared is the same as B squared plus A squared, so it doesn't matter if you switch them around. But C, C does matter. Can you see why it matters? We're doing something different to C. Right? So therefore, I have to know which one C is and put it in the right spot. How do I know which one C is? Opposite. It's opposite. Do you remember we said, just to make sure things are consistent, um, if you label a corner, capital C, we tend to label the opposite side, lowercase c. You see that? Okay, just so, see. Um, just to make it easy for us to work out what is where. 
Okay, so you can see conventions are not just because, oh, we did it this way because that's tradition and we always do it that way. It actually makes things easier, right? So six and seven, they're my A and B. Six and seven, right? And then what's left over is that opposite side, okay? Then on the bottom, I've still got the A and the B. That's two, <coughs> six and seven, done, okay? So now, again, I've gotten to that point where I've interpreted correctly, and now I've got to do a bit of num number crunching, right? So let's get a decimal out of this, cos theta. Um, can someone give me maybe three or four decimal places? Someone who's already calculated that fraction on the right? Anyone there? 0.714. Can I get some verification? Yeah, yeah. does that sound about right? Perfect, okay. So now, remember, when I use the sine rule to find angles, I get to a similar point, except I have sine theta equals this. So what am I going to do with my calculator to just get theta? Yeah, I'm going to go that shift cos, which is cos to the negative 1. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Cos inverse. Okay, And that will hand me an angle. Okay, um, Let's just do it to the nearest degree, shall we, just for the sake of it? We don't need to worry about approximation. What do I get? 44, 44 degrees. 44 to the nearest <coughs> unit. Okay. Now let's just pause for a moment before we leave this. Does it make sense? Does it look reasonable? I think it looks reasonable. Uh, 44 degrees. You notice out of 5, 6, and 7, from the sign rule, we ought to expect that this is the smallest angle in the triangle. Does that make sense? It's the smallest angle because... It's opposite the smallest side. Okay, so 44 degrees, yeah, I've got room in there to make some bigger angles. Um, this makes sense. Now, one more thing I want to ask is, in the sine rule, I had this ambiguous case. If I'm finding an angle, it could be this or it could be that. Now, the brilliant thing about the cosine rule is, there's no ambiguity. But the question is, why? Why does the sine rule leave us with a question mark? Well, you have to do that thing with the angle sum. And the cosine rule doesn't, yeah. Um, we put the sine rule. So it gives the answer based on the sign. Okay, so there's two reasons. The first one is what Aravind's mentioned, right? Do you remember when I said before there's um, four tests for congruence, for triangle congruence? You remember that? Okay. Um, let's just quickly rehearse what the four tests are. Just give me one, anyone. SSS. SSS. Give me another one, someone else. SAS. Another one. RHS. RHS. That's the hipster of the group. No one ever uses him. And? <laughs> there's, there's one more, it's, it's like that. Uh, it's AAS, okay? Now we've got these four tests. I pointed out that with the sine rule, you've got this situation, right? And if the angle's in the wrong spot, if the angle's in the wrong spot, okay, you don't actually know if the triangles are congruent or not, okay? So there's a pair of triangles that could both be there, they have the same angle, same side, same side, but they're not actually the same triangle, which is why you could get, for instance, if you had, um, if you use the sine rule and you got 30 degrees, it could be 150, right? There are two possible triangles that fit that. Have a look at this triangle over on the right-hand side. We're using the cosine rule. What information, when you're trying to find an angle, what information does the cosine rule need? Two sides. It needs, well, it needs more than that, doesn't it? It needs all three sides to do the cosine rule. Did you see that, right? I've got the angle here on the left, which I don't know. And then what I do know is A and B and C. I need all three sides. If I took this guy out, you're stuck. You actually can't find, at least on this information, you can't find out what that angle is with certainty. Okay? But we do know. Now I want you to look back again at these congruence proofs, right? Which congruence proof does the cosine rule correspond to? It's, it's one side, two sides, three sides, right? It's the top one. It's the top one. Now, there's no way, like, if you've got all three sides, you've got all three sides. You absolutely have to have the same triangle. They have to be congruent. There's no way you can accidentally get the wrong one, right, and end up with two solutions. So there's the first reason. I have all three sides, right? If I gave you guys all, um, you guys know those like pipe cleaners, right? Those um, things you can bend around and <coughs> twist and you make a craft out of them. If I gave you all pipe cleaners, one of them was five centimeters, one was six, one was seven. And I gave you guys 30 sets. And I said, all of you, make a triangle, okay? You're all gonna make exactly the same triangle. There's no way you can make another one. They're all going to be congruent, okay? So this is the first reason. The second reason looks like this. Let's do it here. 
You remember what the sine curve looks like, right? What the sine curve looks like? It looks like this, like so. Okay. So when you got to this point, right, and you wanted to solve this, you'd say sine theta equals something. You'd go across and you found one, two solutions, right? And there's your ambiguity. Okay. What does cosine look like? It looks like this, right? Now, your calculator isn't telling you, but it's actually not looking at the whole graph. It's only looking at half of it. <coughs> okay? So when you draw across your same line, the cos, right? 0 0.714, I don't know, something like that. Okay? You're only going to get one solution, like that guy there. Okay? So because the shape of cosine is different, you get a better result. There's no ambiguity with it. Okay, if you're finding an angle or you're finding a side, the cosine rule is generally better. So for choice, that's the one that you use. Okay. Are there any questions on that? One last point before I shut up and get out of your way. Okay? Um, remember I keep saying the cosine rule, I think the easiest way to help you remember it is to think Pythagoras. Think Pythagoras. Okay? I think Pythagoras knew that the cosine rule works. And here's how I reckon he knew. Um, I want you to imagine, right? If I have a right angled triangle, like, wow, I don't have much space left, like this, okay? And C, capital C, right, is the angle opposite, what side is this in a right angled triangle? That's usually the hypotenuse, right? So here is the hypotenuse. I don't care whether I call this A or B or B and A. Okay. So which angle here is capital C? Right. It's, the, it's the right angle, isn't it? Okay. Now, you can either reach for your calculator. If you're really good, you might remember. What's cos of a right angle? What's cos 90? Cos 90? Cos 90. Oh, I actually have it right here. Cos 90. It's, it's zero. You can check it in your calculator if you like. Cos 90 is there, or I could go to the unit circle. Go to the unit circle. 90 degrees is all the way up here, right? And cos is the x coordinate of that spot, which is, which is zero, right? So cos 90, this part becomes zero. In a right angle triangle, this 2ab cos c business, it disappears off. And brilliantly, beautifully, it leaves you with Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. So the cosine rule, it really is. It's not just a coincidence that it looks like Pythagoras. Um, it's Pythagoras, and it works for all different triangles, even 90-degree ones. Okay.